level of this whole. And they probably don't rise to the level of this whole group. So maybe there's somebody I should connect with with those little teeny issues. I put a link to my test document in the agenda. That's it. Thank you. Evan would be the one to connect with. Okay. Who's on? He's on the call here. Cool. You could chat, direct chat him. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, I saw that you had opened a few issues uh, in GitHub. Uh, uh, we appreciate that. So uh, the did you link the, the test document into any of those issues? I didn't because most of the stuff in the test document are pretty trivial items that I don't really want to consume your time with, but maybe a brief conversation to see what is helpful to you. Okay. You know, offline or something. I'll send you a, I'll, I'll send you a message right now. Thank you. Okay, we can get started. Um, this is July 20th already. Uh, years almost over, it feels like. Um, anyway, uh, welcome to the Chaos Community Call, our weekly sync, our weekly chat, our weekly meeting. We're really happy to see everybody here. Thank you for taking time out of your busy days to um, hang out with us and to get caught up on what's happening in the Chaos Community. So we're really happy to see everyone. I will drop the link to our minutes here in, no wait, is that right? Yes. Yeah, that's the minutes. Sorry, I was looking at the other doc that we're going to be working on. Um, so please feel free to add your name. And if you would like to share something good that's happening in your world, that would be great. Um, but you do not have to, obviously. Uh, I'm Elizabeth, by the way, for anyone who is new. I see a few new faces here. I'm the community manager. So it's really, um, we're really, really happy to see you here. And welcome, welcome. Uh, also, just as a point of note, we do not care at all if you don't want to turn your camera on. Um, more than happy to, to have it um, turned off. And if you don't want to chat uh, via audio, you are more than welcome to t type something in the chat to the side of the, um, of the interface there. And we will try and integrate those uh, messages into the, the flow of conversation. So feel free to do that as well. Um, let's get started on the first item. We have the first actual couple items were things that we had tabled um, meaning the US uh, interpretation of the word tabled, <laughs> not the British uh, version of that, um, meaning we, we held them because we ran out of time. So these are kind of older topics that we just are resurfacing today. Uh, so we might be a little fuzzy on what they are actually. <laughs> so if everybody can remember together, we'll, we'll try to move forward. So the first one is the metrics across more than one focus area. And it says it was brought up several times by several people in several working groups. Um, and I added this third bullet that says, does this tie into the metrics model, which our Asia Pacific community had developed? Um, so if someone remembers who put this on here or what that's about, I'm uh, happy to turn the, turn the mic over to you because I do not actually remember. I don't necessarily remember who um, put it in this meeting, but I, I think I wrote some of this stuff in the DEI call initially. So, uh, I mean, everybody had been bringing it up, of course, but uh, it's basically a, that we have some metrics that may be useful to view in different lenses um, so that we may have them in more than one focus area so that uh, we would be able to look at it from the angle of evolution and common or uh, more, more likely evolution and DEI, evolution and risk, um, risk and value, kind of those intersectional metrics that um, can be looked at in more than one way. Um, and, and there are a lot of examples of those. I won't go on about that, but um, yeah. What, what do you mean with the metrics model, Elizabeth? I'm kind of a little confused about that. So in the, oh, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, in the Asia Pacific group, they introduced the concept of a metric model, which they define as taking a set of chaos metrics that are commonly used together and displaying them together. The metaphor that I, that makes it make sense to me is you bring in a plumber, an electrician, a drywall person when you're building a house, but you go to your kitchen. And so there's certain things that you use when you're in your kitchen and there's other things you use when you're in your living room. And those are metaphors for the kinds of things that you're trying to understand about an open source project. So in, in answer to your question, uh, yes, the metrics model that the Asia Pacific group created is uh, 
very relevant to this conversation. Uh, I will say from a, from a metrics release standpoint, this has been a concern for us uh, almost from day one. Uh, so the metrics, the metrics themselves are, are kind of, they're sorted by working group, which makes sense when you're creating the working or when you're creating the, the metrics. Uh, but when we're presenting the metrics, it does make more sense to present them in ways that people may find useful. Uh, so we, we do have a couple prototypes that we've created uh, to kind of sort and categorize metrics. And some of that is based on some of the initiatives that we've done. For example, one way to categorize and present metrics might be uh, metrics related to event badging uh, and so on. So it's it's an ongoing conversation and we're, we're really not, uh, I think we're, we're open to having discussions about the best ways to kind of categorize and put these metrics in different buckets for presentation. And the Asia Pacific group did sort of put together a proposed set of metric, what they call metric models. But the way I think about it is I have the electrician wire the whole house and that might be a working group and the plumber does all the plumbing and that's a working group, but all of these facilities are used in different rooms for different purposes. Yeah, and this is something we struggle with a lot within companies too, right? Because we refer to this as like shipping your org chart. Your, your customer doesn't care which organization within your company does a specific thing. Um, but that is how companies are organized. So we're organized by working groups. That's where the work happens. But the people who consume it don't, don't really care how the sausage is made. They really just care that they've got some good metrics that they can use together. Maybe this is a point to uh, like contact or uh, communicate with the companies and get a survey that how they are using to get a better sense. Like we are in our own silos, we are developing the uh, metrics in our working groups, but uh, getting a feedback from the consumer who are using them is more helpful. Like how we can display them or maybe in different things. So I guess I have a couple questions. It's just in terms of connecting things. So um, part of it seems like we're asking the working groups that create metrics to think about how their metrics could be used in other working groups. Is that right? Uh, I'm I'm not. Uh, I think the the way the working groups work currently is perfectly fine, and I think the. It's, it's perfectly acceptable for a working group to take ownership of a metric and uh, work on creating it. I think the, the categorization and presentation of, of metrics across working groups, I, I don't think that's a specific working group uh, question. I think that's more a, uh, I think that's more related to our initiatives, right? So these uh, metrics dashboards and the badging and, and things of that nature uh, and use cases, right? So where we where we start to explore uh, use cases and collections of metrics that may uh, kind of fit together to tell us something more interesting. So I would say this is outside of the scope of individual working groups and and more at the community level. And I don't I don't know that we necessarily have to have a bunch of definitive ways of categorizing and presenting them. Uh, I kind of envision a, a more more of a flexible system where we can uh, kind of create these categorizations and present them and get feedback on them. Uh, Could it be that the working groups have they're kind of a model in a sense? So value is a, a set of questions that people might be interested in, and we create things in working groups and those could represent models as well as the way that they're constructed. And there could be other models or other rooms that we address that are either subsets or cross sections of different working groups. So is it not, and could it possibly be not either or, 
but some combination. I wonder if what we really need is not, not to be a proponent for an extra committee, but I almost think that we probably do need an extra committee for this. So we'd have, you know, a at least one representative from each of the major working groups, maybe somebody like Kevin to represent the, the website, maybe somebody else to represent marketing, because this does have kind of a tie to how people, how people consume the metrics. But it seems, I mean, I, I think what we need is just like a committee of, you know, um, people who can look across all of these and make some decisions about what's the best way to present this to the people that consume them. So would that working group be like a group on the slides that that we have from the Asia Pacific call? I don't know if you see those, the community metric model that like brings together metrics like that. So we would say like, here's one way of looking at bringing the metrics together. And then the badging program is another way of bringing the metrics together. Is that what you're talking about, Don? Um. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how these go together. I mean, I've, I've seen, I've seen the presentation and it does, it does have things kind of in, in different, in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, my point is that we probably just need a few people to sit down and figure out which, how, how we want to organize this. What, what is the best way to organize it? And it might be something like this metric metrics model that the um, Asia Pacific team put together. I, yeah, I don't know. I think I think the Asia Pacific group has sort of what they view as a set of candidate metrics that go together, but they're probably not all inclusive and they may not apply across all situations, but they may be maybe it's a place to start like take one of those models collect some metrics in that context and see what utility that one has and what's missing or what it applies to and just a sort of a pilot, I suppose. I think Matt G also, you had come up with the idea of kind of like these personas or, you know, like a, like if you're this person, these are the metrics that you might care about, like a community manager, here's the things that you might. So I think that that is also a, a component of this, um, which I think is, holds a lot of value as well. Um, so I don't want that piece to get lost in, in the shuffle somewhere. Cause I, I liked how you were thinking of presenting them in, in more of like a story format. Um, but that was great. So I, uh, I agree with that as well. Uh, when I think about these, I, I tend to think of categorizing them into use cases. So. All right, so a new committee. I mean, that's, I think it's a good idea because it doesn't seem like these are being, like, it doesn't seem like this could happen in common, you know, like common would take time out of their day to do this and likewise for evolution or DEI. And so at some point we do need to draw them together. Um, like this call would be the only place <laughs> that we actually have representation to do that. Or it's, or it's own call. So I think it's a good idea. Okay, so um, we have a decision that we're probably gonna make a committee then that will focus on this in particular. Uh, do we have someone that wants to spearhead that committee? Kind of own it for now and, and help get it going. I mean, I can do that just in terms of organizing time and stuff like that. That's perfect, because I was going to say I can't spearhead it, but I'm definitely glad to help. And, and I think I can help by just putting, taking some of those models, one or two of them from the Asia Pacific group and assembling metrics from Augur and putting them in a page and seeing what people see. I'd be interested in uh, participating, um, although I don't have the breadth of knowledge to be a central contributor. I mean, part of it Part of it to me is like, we can worry about this when we talk in the committee, but like, I don't have the answers. And so it would be talking to people who do bring these together on a daily basis and just listening to what they have to say 
and and trying to draw that out and present it to others. So like you, Lucas, I don't have the answers. <laughs> So Matt, if people are interested, a few people have expressed interest, should they um, like jot their name down in these? Um, yeah, it'd be oh, great. Okay. So yeah, yes. add your name if you are interested in participating with Matt G. Sorry, Matt, I didn't mean to cut you off. You didn't cut me off. Okay then, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I reject the <laughs> <your> apology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I probably have cut you off in the past, so we'll just assign that apology I'll to accept you. that one then. <laughs> awesome, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, I feel really good about that because it's been a topic, um, you know, that has come up, and it feels good to like make progress on that. So, thank you, Matt G, for spearheading that, and for those who have already expressed interest in participating. That's awesome. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next item on the list, which says chaos community main email question. And I have no idea who put this on here a few weeks ago. So if you are here and you want to talk about that, let's talk about it. I didn't put it there, but I'm guessing it has something to do with getting off the email. We've talked about this for like a thousand years. So <laughs> that's all I can guess. It's like dropping mailman and moving over to whatever the other thing is. I mean, that's all I can guess what, what this is. I thought maybe it was like, um, does chaos have a like central email, which we do, but we don't use it at super ton. That's a, that's a much easier question. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> And uh, yeah, if someone wants to email it, uh, some of us do check that occasionally. But we, don't, we mostly use it for Gmail and like our Google Drive and things like that to have that the central point. Does anybody have questions on that or comments? It, or? This, is this, this is the mailing list or the main email? I, I'm not, now I got confused. It sounds <laughs> like speculation to me. None of us know. So maybe we could move on to the next <laughs> move along. item. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. So the next thing is our, um, our data ethics discussion, which um, is super exciting because we've never done this on this call before, but we're going to take five, 10 minutes and do work in this doc that's linked in the minutes. And we can also, I will link it in the chat as well. Um, and if you've never participated in something like this before in one of the working groups, um, I'll just give a quick rundown of how this usually goes. So we usually do some collaboration real time in um, a Google Doc, which I put in the chat and it's also in the minutes. And um, we usually ask that people put on uh, the suggestion, suggested edits instead of just straight out editing. And that way we can kind of sort out the things that we want to keep or not or what, how we want to go. Um, so we'll just take a few minutes and actually go into the doc and work and um, feel free to add whatever you want, any comments or, or suggested edits. Um, it's a pretty bare bones doc right now. Um, and just as a background, the reason we're doing this is because um, it's come up a few times about using the data ethically, the data that we offer to people, um, you know, ways that they can collect data. And the guidelines around that are a little fuzzy in the industry, as Sophia mentioned um, before. There's a, a reference in the data ethics doc um, that kind of gives a little background of, you know, how, how data is, is suggested to be used across the industry. And it's, it's not clear. Um, so we thought it would be a good idea if we kind of like drew our line in the sand and said, this is what we believe. And this is how we think our data could be used ethically and should be used ethically. I mean, some of the stuff, especially around the DEI metrics um, could, can be sensitive. And um, we wanna just make sure that we set those expectations up somewhere clearly. Um, we figured this was the best place to do that uh, since we have a, a group here that's um, kind of cross working group and other community members that don't get a chance to join us any other way. So um, let's, uh, we're going to pause the recording for like five, 10 minutes and we'll just go in that doc and, and start banging some stuff out. Is that cool with everyone? Does anybody have questions 
about that. If you've not done this before, totally fine to ask questions if you're not clear on how this goes. Then I'll pause the recording. Okay. So we're back. And just to sum up um, the few comments that we just made, um, this doc that we just worked on will be used as guidance because we do have a separate doc that outlines how chaos uh, uses the data. And maybe we can reference that as, a, as an example for someone who is, who is looking to, to put their own together or something like that. Um, any, I think we, it looks like from the comments in the chat that we would maybe want to just let this sit as it is for a week. And maybe next week we can come back to it again and, and look at it with fresh eyes. Can I, and can then I, it gives people a time. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. You can comment. So one of the things that when I was reading the, the document that I was struggling with was like on one end, we could say like the, the, the statement could say that it could be like a sentence, like think think ethically when you're using data, full stop, like just at one end, it's just really, really broad. And then guidance can go pretty far down as to how you're supposed to use the data. And I, I, I was having trouble like balancing what, like be nice as a piece of guidance on one hand and very detailed things to do with the data on the other hand. I'm not sure what the proper, where, how far we should go. That's all. I don't have an answer. I, yeah, I, I would think that we would want to stay away from getting too deep on anything because some of them do have legal implications and I'm, I'm not a lawyer. So I would want to, to shy away from anything that got too specific into regulatory or technical implementation guidance that could have some kind of legal ramification. But what I think we could do is provide more of a, a comprehensive view of things to consider or things that might have legal or compliance level implications as well, um, as well as things that are just more on the undefined and cons ethical consideration side. So it's more, I don't know, I feel like enumerating it versus explicitly providing guidance will help us keep, keep us out of hot water if there's ever sort of like well chaos said through so and so and now I'm getting sued so um I just that's that's the one issue that I want to raise and maybe at some point we do involve a lawyer just to have someone else review what we have to make sure that we're not in a place where we're going to regret saying something I, I think I hear you saying we don't want to be the legal shield for everyone that uses chaos metrics Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. Um, any other comments before we move on? All right, I guess not. So action item to everyone. Take a look at that doc again over the course of the week if you have time and you feel like it is on your mind. You want to add something, feel free to do so. And next week, we'll come back to it and look at it one more time. And thanks everyone for participating. That was awesome. We should do that again in the future. All right, so the next item on the list is that Mars is open for user testing, hooray. And for those who don't know, uh, Mars is our metrics automated release system, which our two Google Summer of Code students are working on, Yash and Ritik. And Yash was here, but I don't, oh, there he is. Hi, Yash. Hello. Do you want to talk about that a little? Yeah, sure. So earlier the release of the metrics was done manually. We used to download each metric by hand, you know, then compile it and make a PDF. Uh, the project now automates this and we automatically pull the metrics, come, uh, merge it into a PDF. We add the front and the end matter. So overall this saves a lot of manual hardware for the user. And the, it's almost complete. We have finished the documentation, the coding is done. So we just want to send it out for some user testing. So if you are interested in testing it out, if you notice some issues, if you have any suggestions, feel free to let us know. And it would be really great. We just want to see how this week goes. 
Thank you, Yash. I'd just like to, uh, uh, as, a, as a mentor on this project, I'd like to say there, uh, the students are doing a really good job. Uh, and then as the, as the person that was doing the releases prior, I would like to say thank you for creating the automated process. So uh, this is gonna, it'll uh, make future releases uh, uh, much easier. What are you gonna do with all your time, Kevin? Oh, we're, we'll, uh, we'll expand this process to uh, create uh, different uh, use case categorizations for metrics. Right. <laughs> awesome. we'll, uh, we'll just roll it into that uh, previous discussion we were having. I, I would have said I would sleep more, but Excellent. that's yes. the difference between you and me, Kevin. <laughs> You're actually productive. Thank you, Yash. That is so amazing. We are super, super excited. Um, it, just as a point of clarification, so like to use, to test it, do like, would we, how do we make a metric to test it, I guess, is my question. Or is that all documented in the? So it's basically a system to you know, create the release of metrics. Like it generates, the, it compiles the markdowns from the repositories of the working groups and then it makes the release PDF. So it's all documented out. We have two approaches. One is about using the Docker and the other is using a Python virtual environment. We recommend the Docker approach because it's much simpler, but feel free to use whichever case suits you. Awesome. Thank you again for, for doing all of that. And uh, if anybody is interested in helping out with user testing, the links are in the minutes. So check that out. And I will, I'll, I'll give it a, a, a go, Yash. And I'd just like to say awesome job as well. Not only have Yash and Ritik done this technically, but they've also taken time to look across the entire chaos project and connect with the different working groups. and issue the appropriate pull requests and standardization across all working groups that required this technology to even work. So it was a kind of a very broad look at, at the, the project. So great job. And they also made a logo. Like, how awesome is that? We have a Mars logo. That's super cool. <laughs> the readme is also kind of themed around Mars. So like the main heading of the readme is portal to Mars. <laughs> Nice. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a Pluto project. I'm gonna bring back Pluto. Now everyone's thinking of what that could stand for. I know. P O. Yeah. All right. Any final questions or comments? Anything else for Yash? All right, um, the, so the last thing on here uh, was Lucas's comments on the QA pass for the new site. Um, in case anyone did not hear this news, we are migrating to a new WordPress instance on Wednesday. Is that right, Kevin? Cross your fingers. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's right. I'm, I'm a little behind on my part. I, I have been a little bit ill, but uh, I will, uh, I think we're ready. I, the, the testing will happen before noon tomorrow. Is there anything else um, that the community can do to support you too, Kevin and Sean, in this? Do you need more testing or what do you need from us? I, I think the, big, the biggest thing will be, you know, these things can take a minute and run into un, un, unplanned little issues. So uh, if you need anything from the chaos website, uh, getting it before 12 noon tomorrow um, and giving us, you know, two or three hours to get through the whole process. It shouldn't take that long, but we're technical people. We've done this before. It could. Yep. I, I don't think we need anything from the community currently uh, following the uh, following the the migration, the actual switch. I do have a I have a list of things that have kind of been put on hold while we were waiting for this process to go through. So for the next few days, you might see uh, some new pull requests coming in. Uh, and uh, I'll be accepting a few pull requests that have been on hold. So I, I guess the be attentive to that, I suppose. 
Kevin, do you need anything from Brian at the Linux Foundation for the domain? I, I don't think so. I mean, we're, uh, uh, I forget we have a, Kevin's name. We, we, we should uh, be good for Wednesday. Okay. Jason, Jason or Josh, maybe. Yeah, we have a ticket open to do the cut over to our new IP address at approximately noon oh, Central okay. Daylight Time. But I mean, so it'll be give or take when that actually happens. Okay, cool. Would it be helpful if I put something on Twitter about it or or not? Uh, I don't. I don't think, I mean, we don't really have a high traffic website. So uh, if it if it goes down for a half an hour, I'm not, I'm not sure uh, anybody will be uh, too upset. Uh, but but maybe, a, maybe a disclaimer would be nice, I suppose, now that you mention it. Yeah, I, I, I think while we're doing it, we can also redirect the domain once the IP is transferred to a page that just says this site's currently undergoing maintenance, which seems to be the custom yeah, and maybe just a a the website the website might be down for thirty minutes to an hour on on Wednesday during the during the migration. I'll try to reverse engineer an acronym for Pluto to put on that page. Are we are we having a uh, uh, chaos con meeting following this? I know we usually we usually end a little early for that we have um well we have three minutes i mean we could go a little longer if we need to um i don't know uh, chaos con committee what do you think do we need to meet do we not what do you want to do when is the the deadlines in august for the calls for the, the rfp right what's the what's the date august 13th and what how are we doing on submissions so far i know we have at least one Oh, did we? We didn't have any as of last week, but I can check right now. I, I thought we, I know there was one that was intended. I don't, maybe it didn't quite make it yet, but I, I think maybe the one thing we would ask is if you have something that you'd like to present, please submit. But I don't know if there's anything we need to talk about while we're waiting for that, unless there's any news from the LF about location or stuff. Yeah, I think uh, Don brought up a point. I think it was last week. Maybe it was on Slack. Like, I, I think it'll depend on when Open Source Summit CFP decisions are made. Uh, but i guessing there's a delay because they were supposed to notify people by yesterday, but I don't think the notification's gone out. I thought it was August 3rd. They might have uh, pushed that. Okay. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, the date I had in mind was like yesterday and the 19th but maybe that got pushed out and i just wasn't aware but i had that date in my mind too ray you weren't the only one yeah yeah i mean we might we might both be wrong but i i think depending on if your talk gets accepted that might sway your decision in terms of whether you submit to your chaos count or not so plus people will wait until the last minute to submit yeah, so yeah. I mean, we'll in get, general, we'll get right? ninety percent yeah. of our submissions yeah. in the three days before the deadline. If anything like past years, I will mention that the um, proposal system, the the form that we submit a proposal with, is not long and it's um, pretty pretty well streamlined. So uh, it's it's not um, going to be difficult to submit, and you don't have to write an essay for it or anything. Maybe an abstract. But that's about it. All right. Well, I guess we're good then. We don't need to meet Chaos Con peeps. So um, we will go ahead and close the meeting. It is 10 till. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day. We will see you here next week, this time, this place. And in the meantime, hit us up on Slack or uh, mailing list, however you would like to do that. So thanks for everybody for coming and we will see you next time. Yeah. Bye everybody. Can, um, yeah. Can AV team for I can't remember who that was. I think it was Kevin and someone else for the Chaos Con. I need to get in contact with people. <laughs> I think I'm just going to get in contact with Kevin. Con and myself.
Oh, I, th- I thought you left already. Sorry. Yeah, I can hang. I can hang out if there's any AV club stuff that you want to chat about. <laughs> AV club is a great term for it. Yeah. It's a, I'll, I'll just email y'all uh, and okay. we'll figure something out. Uh, we don't have to meet. I don't think. I just have questions. Okay. See y'all. See ya.